This is Patriot League Basketball on ESPN Plus. Today, from the roof at the Case Center in Boston, it's the Boston University Terriers against the Colgate University Raiders. Shadowed by Tucker Richardson, but hits the foul line jumper for the first basket of the game. And so Matt Langle, they're gonna run a lot of the, it's about the discipline defense for the Terriers again. Walter White drills his first shot of the game, it's a three. Shot clock down to five, Fletcher Tynan hits. Well, the fires. Cummings brings it up himself. Nice pass on the cut to Ferguson for the easy two. It's just that early first foul. I don't know if he even got a touch on offense while he was on the floor before he came out as Fletcher Tynan cleans up the loose chain. And Terrier's doing what they do back court set because their defense is going to be tough to go against. Ethan Britton Watts hits wow. the little fall away. Fusions for more than others. That's a, that should have been a self pass. That wow. was an air ball. And instead, it turns into a three by Lynch Daniels. That Souk looking for his first points, and he gets him inside on Woodward. Oh, well. Cummings with the step back over Souk Matone for Nelly Cummings' first points of the day. And that's the shots again. These are Penn disciples. They want to use their big men to make passes, so you got to cut off the back doors. Underneath, Jonas Harper working hard against Cummings, and he stays with it for two. Yeah. Souk inside, and over Woodward again. Well, that was been on that shot, and unfortunately comes up short. Javante McCoy ties the game! Well, how about a little transition offense for the Terriers? But Souk Matone's free throws give BU the lead, and Ferguson gets blocked underneath at the other end. Mile drive, didn't get it. That's kind of what Miles does. He flies all over the court as Javante McCoy drills a three. White with the handoff to McCoy, just able to keep his pivot foot. And EBW hits the three in front of the Colgate bench. Yeah. Records will try again. And again, he is shut down by Tremezzi. Oh. Trying to expand this lead, and McCoy does. It's not only threes and layups, which I know analytics. Duke inside on Woodward. Gets doubled, doesn't matter. You know, I think that play was so much harder than his last hook shot that he missed. Javante, thinking about it, clears, and hits again as he's able to get away from Ryan Moffitt. Underneath the basket, and gets it back for a three, right in front of his teammates on the bench. And I was... Suk Matone, on record, gets two more. Yeah. Suk now has 10 in the game. And... Fletcher Tynan. Jonas Harper will take it and hit it at the free throw line. Yeah, Jonas Harper was on one foot when he took that shot. If they hurry, McCoy with a change of direction and a kick out for Jonas Harper's three. Well, Ferguson is 0 for 3 and EBW also in there. See if Malcolm can pick up where he left off in the first half as Cummings hits the fall away. Records inside, short with the hook, but he cleans it up. Uh, they are taking, they are trying to do everything they can. Clock at 10 for the Terriers. Javante McCoy in traffic with all the moves and the shot. Oh, that was just a one-on-one -on -one move. The Terriers who have had not. Looking for Souk Matone, not a great pass, but Souk collects it, and he may collect three points too. Well, that's now, each team has had one where it's either. Last night, BU by four. Walter White wants to work on Moffitt. Moffitt with the flop that doesn't work, and White converts. And they didn't call. Nice skip pass by Richardson to Cummings for the triple. Well, Cummings is having himself a great second half. He now has four. Ferguson taking the ball off the dribble this time. Tynan with the tough entry pass to Matone, and he hits the hook shot over Woodward. Uh -huh. Jones with the quick trigger, and the three. First points of the day for CJ. Oliver. You're waiting to get that up to seven, aren't you? <laughs> Woodward inside, blocked by Matone. Now for Jones. BU trying to extend a five point lead under eight minutes to go in the game. Jonas Harper dances into the paint for two. Oh yeah, a little two step action for Jonas Harper and them just to the defense. McCoy takes the contact and makes it 17 points. Cummings with the step back, and he gets it. For again. Walter White with a bad pass. Richardson starts the break. Ferguson hits the three. Somehow you knew. Raiders. Cummings will try it over Tynan. 
It's off target. Moffitt hustles for the rebound and gets a return pass and scores! What a pass from Richardson to Moffitt. Moffitt working hard to get the rebound and then... So now it's a six point game again. Colgate needs to hurry. Lynch Daniels underneath the miss by Fort Ferguson. And Matone with the rebound. As Tucker Richardson finds Moffitt for the three at the buzzer. And that creates the final score. The Terriers defense wins this game. They were able to build up enough of a lead. Back here at the roof, that's four wins in a row for the Terriers as they beat the Colgate Raiders 76-72. Javante McCoy joining me, 17 points for you, Javante. Your mid-range game is something that is very different in this league and different from analytics. Why is that so important to you and what made you uh, focus on that? Uh, it just makes the game easier. You can't set up with threes, you can't set up with just going to the rim. Sometimes you just got to get to the sweet spot and make the defense play honest, so it makes, it makes scoring easier. This game against Colgate, and we've seen it through the last four games, has certainly been kind of uh, back and forth affairs, ties and lead changes. What is it about this team right now being able to really take advantage during winning time? Uh, you talking about us? Yep. Oh, I mean, we just, we know what we're capable of, and we just trust each other. We go out there, we play uh, with, with the most effort, and we just, like we said, we, we try to execute the game plan that coaches give us, and, you know, we capitalize on this opportunity, so. I know you're in year five now. You understand kind of big games, big game atmospheres. How much do you talk about with your teammates about a chance to beat a team like this Colgate team who has been really at the top of the conference the last four years? Well, we know every game is going to be a dog fight, and we know what Colgate, like our history with last year and how they, they beat us a couple times or every time, and then the championship games that we play with them, and we know that this is a big rivalry. We know that there's a lot of uh, – just a, just a lot of fight that goes into this game. So we just come out here, we just play with uh, the most effort we could give, and we just let that take care of everything. The Terriers will get a break before they go back, uh, maybe back at home against Holy Cross. Real quickly, as this snow comes in, who makes the best snow angel? Snow angel? Uh, I don't know, probably me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Javante McCoy with 17 points as the Terriers win at 76-72. Back at the roof for a final time as BU wins at 76-72 over Colgate with assistant coach Walt Corbin. Well, we've seen this now two games in a row that the first four minutes have become really a feeling out period. What is it about Colgate that was able to get them that early lead? Well, it's, it's certainly not supposed to be a, a feeling out period. I mean, we're, we're supposed to come out with a little bit more passion, a little bit more energy, but you know, we just found a way to keep grinding there. And you know, it was uh, it just the, the personnel movement wasn't great. The end of the first half ended up holding Colgate to under 29% from the field. As a defensive guy, you know, those are the numbers that you obviously look at. What did you see from this team defensively that was able to really uh, shut down this high-octane Colgate offense? Well, we wanted to pressure and be in. So we wanted to make sure that we contained the ball, and they're at their best when they can catch, rip it, and get into a gap, and then cause the rotations, and then make one or two more passes and got a wide-open three. So the last day, I mean, we only had one day to prep. We really, really talked about having a presence in that gap and containing the basketball. You know, you can sometimes go through a game and not notice that a team didn't get a field goal for the last 7-19 of the game. That's what the Terriers did. They did it at the free throw line to hold on and win this thing. Uh, what did you see in the last 7-19 that this Terrier team did so well to maintain the victory? Well, we just, you know, and Coach talked about it in the, in the timeouts. I mean, we wanted to just make sure that we, you know, stayed positive and, and stayed, you know, calm through the, through the drought. And, and, you know, we were able to do that. And I think it, you know, it's because of how he approached the team. You know, if he would have come in the huddle and would have been, you know, screaming and yelling, I think it would have been, you know, maybe a different outcome. But, you know, he was calm and poised. And I think that it just showed that the guys were calm and poised. I need to ask you one more question. This is a very senior-led team, a, a very old, a much older experienced team. But today it was Malcolm Tremezzi who had a real breakthrough kind of game with a career high in rebounds. Uh, what did you think of his performance? Well, you know, we know, we see it every day, what he can, you know, what he's capable of doing you guys just haven't seen it because you're not with us every single day but you know nothing tonight surprised us I mean, he you know he did what he's capable of doing and we're going to continue to demand more out of him the freshman grew up and Walt's still throwing shots at us that's the normal way it works as the Terriers improve to six and four with a 76-72 win over Colgate